untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a green-white enchantment deck, but before you click away, this isn't your typical green-white enchantment aggro deck with cards like Generous Visitor and Kami of Transients. Instead, we're focusing more on Rite of Harmony as a very powerful card draw engine. This was voted on by my supporters on Patreon, a two-mana instant saying whenever a creature or enchantment enters the battlefield under your control this turn, you get to draw a card, and we can even flash it back out of the graveyard for four mana. So Rite of Harmony should shines in this deck because we have all these sagas like Teachings of the Kirin, Azusa's Many Journeys, and 3 mana Restoration of Aganjo, and we can also group Wedding Announcement into that list. All cards that can make creatures with a bit of a delay, meaning we can play our Many Journeys or Teachings on turn 2, play our Wedding Announcement turn 3, and then turn 4, before our sagas transform, we can cast our Rite of Harmony because it's an instant. That way, as soon as our Many Journeys or Teachings transforms, we immediately draw a card from our enchantment creature entering the battlefield. End of turn we can maybe generate an extra token with wedding announcement, which will also still draw a card with right, and then we still have two mana left over to potentially play another enchantment, maybe play a naturalist or companion, or even teachings, which will draw two cards with right of harmony, one from the enchantment and one from the token entering the battlefield. So there's a ton of synergy here to draw a ton of cards early with right of harmony, and then in the late game this becomes even more powerful once we have Hallowed Haunting in play and this is the main win condition and engine card in our deck, saying as long as we control 7 or more enchantments, creatures we control have Flying and Vigilance, and whenever we cast an enchantment spell, create a white Spirit Cleric creature token with power and toughness each equal to the number of spirits we control. So all the spirits grow the more enchantments we cast, and we even have some other cards in the deck that actually make spirit tokens between our teachings of the Kirin, as well as at 3 mana, or Architect of Restoration can make 1-1 one -one spirit tokens when it attacks or blocks. So that's our main game plan, just try and get some of these enchantments in play, and then draw a ton of cards with right, until we can eventually go off with our Hallowed Haunting. Then taking a look at the rest of our deck, of course playing the full set of Jukai Naturalist, giving all our enchantments a 1 mana discount, very helpful in casting our Hallowed Haunting a turn ahead of schedule. Then at 2 mana, of course, Teachings of the Kirin, making a 1-1 one -one Spirit token on Chapter 1, as well as milling 3 cards, which is helpful in potentially milling over a Rite of Harmony, which can still be flashed back. We can also potentially mill one of our cheaper permanents to get back with a second chapter of Restoration of Iganjo, and we can even mill Catilda, which can also be disturbed out of the graveyard for 5 mana. So milling ourselves actually has a bit of value. Of course, also fuels the Transformed Kirin, which can exile creatures or non-creatures from a graveyard, in the case of a creature making another 1-1 one -one spirit token, and in the case of a non-creature putting an additional plus one counter on one of our creatures, which we can also do on a chapter 2. And Teachings is also a pretty good answer to an opposing Invoke Despair, which makes a sacrifice creature, enchantment, and planeswalker, so now we can easily sacrifice creature and enchantment without feeling too bad about it, and then the opponent only gets to draw one more card. And then we also have four copies of Azusa's Many Journeys, letting us play an additional length this turn, so another way to set up a turn 3 Hallowed Haunting, and just helping us ramp to make more mana, to set up a more effective Rite of Harmony. We are playing 26 lands total to make sure that our Azusa's Many Journeys is effective, and then eventually transforms into a 3-3 after gaining some life, which can also potentially untap some of our lands to help combo with right. And then just two copies of Spirited Companion, still excellent in this deck as it will draw when it enters, can easily play it alongside our Naturalist for one mana, and then can help us draw even more cards with a Rite of Harmony. And then at 3 mana, full set of Wedding Announcement, very powerful standard card, making 1-1 one -one tokens, potentially drawing if we attack with 2 or more creatures. Although in this deck we're often better off just making a token, that way we also still get to draw with Right of Harmony, so we get to have the best of both worlds, and then eventually we'll give our team a plus 1 plus 1. And then we also have the full set of Restoration, which can find a Plains when it enters, that way we can keep hitting our land drops, and our Azusa's Many Journeys is more likely to still be effective in the mid to late game. And then we get to potentially return a permanent with mana value 2 or less from our graveyard to the battlefield after discarding a card, so that can maybe get back a Naturalist that we milled with Teachings to immediately get the benefit from the mana discount, which can also be very helpful, or we can always just discard a land and put it in play as another form of ramping. And then the Architect of Restoration is also pretty good as a 3-4 Vigilance, making additional spirit tokens when attacking or blocking. 
and then two copies of Fall of Lord Conda, definitely a flex slot, you could play with Borrowed Time instead as a more general purpose answer, you could also play some main deck copies of Destroy Evil, which can deal with opposing copies of Wedding Announcement or Fable of the Mirrorbreaker, as well as still answering Shieldred, which is our main concern, as Shieldred can definitely punish us for drawing a ton of cards with our Rite of Harmony, so that's a creature we have to answer, and our deck does not have a lot of removal, but Fall of Lord Conda is a perfect answer to it, as it will exile Shieldred, even if our enchantment leaves the battlefield, Shieldred stays exiled, and then we can also potentially transform it into the Fragment of Conda, which can provide more value with Rite of Harmony, and also just draws a card when it dies. And then we've got two copies of Catilda, which also grows with the number of enchantments and spirits we control, so perfect alongside our Hallowed Haunting, and then also has Flying and Lifelink, so great for getting some life back against the aggressive decks, and can be disturbed out of the graveyard in the form of an enchantment aura that will enchant our creature, and basically does the same as the front side of the card, pumping our creature equal to the amount of enchantments and spirits we control. And then, last but not least, of course, four copies of Hallowed Haunting, which is going to combo off pretty quickly in this deck, especially if we can combine it with a card draw from Rite of Harmony to keep fueling it. And then a mana base, as we mentioned, 26 lands total, including four copies of Blossoming Sands. You could also play some of the Tri Lands from Streets of New Capenna, especially if you're also interested in playing a Leyline Binding in the main deck, which would then get an additional discount from those basic land types. But I'm just going for a two color deck and Blossoming Sands to gain one life. And the additional mana fixing is quite helpful. We can easily play this turn one tapped since we don't have anything else going on. And then later in the game, especially once we get the discount from Naturalist, we might find ourselves wanting to. To cast a lot of these for just a single mana and then we need a lot of green and white respectively to make sure we can still have a very efficient turn especially once a right of harmony is involved and then uh, six forest ten planes some of the channel lands with boseju and daigancho for additional interaction and a farmland as a nice dual land as well so yeah that's our deck now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does okay we're on the draw with a fine opening hand turn two can start with many journeys, or we could play a naturalist first. Depends if we expect it to survive. Against mono black, probably a lead with many journeys. And then we can time our right, so we can uh, maybe draw cards once we get a likeness in play. Now we can also restoration next turn, depending on what happens here. Opponent Esper with uh, reinforcements making two 1-1s. One so it could be kind of an Esper flash deck with a few counter spells. So next turn we could maybe go Naturalist plus Restoration and then put an upkeep stop to cast a right. And then maybe get a lot of value right away. Kaito's gonna draw. Ooh, Hallowed Haunting's good too. Do we want to just resolve that now? And then next turn we can write plus maybe Naturalist. Yeah, that seems good. So I'll put an upkeep stop so we can write before getting our transformation so we can draw an extra card. If Shieldred shows up we have an answer. Kaito draws again. There's no secret I can't uncover. And it's going to be a Suspicious Stowaway instead. Okay. And our opponent destroying our Hallowed Haunting. Ouch. Okay. I'm surprised they let us untap. So now our uh, turn's going to be a little bit less exciting. Probably could have waited to cast our right until after our draw step, but that's okay. So now I can play a Naturalist and then hope to draw Companion, or we can just go for Restoration, which is still pretty mana efficient. Sure. Got another right. So we can still draw quite a few cards here. But Hello Taunting would have made it easy. Opponent attacking with a 1 1, planning to maybe put some counters on it so it can attack past uh, likeness. 
discarding cut down and emperor and uh, I could trade here don't have any long-term plans for the likeness other than maybe pressuring Kaito but they've got a 1-4 bank anyways I guess we could generate extra mana that way which can help me combo with the right so maybe I'll take it for now and then I'll put a stop again so we can maybe respond to our second chapter which could put a naturalist in play here thanks i'll be taking that now okay so this time we'll take our draw step and then in response to the trigger i can write We get to draw right away and then now I could go for naturalist plus companion and then maybe something afterwards. Okay farmland's good so go for companion and then we can still attack with our likeness potentially untapping a few lands. Our opponent destroys our saga At least we got to benefit from it now. Picked up a few too many lands. So let's send likeness at Kaito, which is close to an ultimate. And then we'll cast this just to draw. Find another restoration. And could still potentially pick up a green enchantment we can cast, but just a hello taunting. Alright, now we've got a lot of mana and double right in the graveyard, which we can potentially put to use. Might be able to give our team flying with hello taunting, so we can pressure Kaito. Although Meetog Massacre could be bad. Two pluses. Now this is a juice. And we'll take our draw step here. Another land, it's not ideal. So what's about to trigger? Gain control of our permanence and then discard a land to get back. Not much here. So we're just getting back a land. Still worth it. So then we'll go for a right into Hello Taunting to at least get a card back and then hopefully pick up some enchantments we can cast on the cheap. Okay, that works. So our team has flying. And we can attack all at Kaito. Question is whether the companion also wants to attack or not. Yeah, I think that's fine. Because if they block companion with Rafine, then Kaito would die, assuming no interaction. Our creatures having vigilance means Wandering Emperor doesn't quite work out. Of course, they can block like a naturalist and then give Rafine a plus one counter. But that's not the end of the world. So Kaito down. They probably have a backup, and then end of turn, wedding announcement draws as well. Okay, so we're still in this, despite some well-timed destroy evils. And there's a wandering emperor. Okay. And then next turn we could ride again. We're drawing cards left and right. I have got new moves to teach you. 
for for stowaway and Rafine getting in there. So we could try to double or triple block Rafine. It's unlikely to work out well for me in case I have another Wandering Emperor to give it plus one and first strike. So I think I just take it. And then next turn is going to be pretty sweet if we get to combo off with our Hallowed Haunting. Bonan does of course get to see a lot of cards. There could be a Meat Hook Massacre in our future, which was a reason to maybe chum block Rafine. Alright, we get to take our draw step. And then in response to the transformation, we're going to want to write again. We'll do this now. And then Katilda's great too. Play Companion, trigger Hallowed Haunting, draw more with right. Just making sure we have enough enchantments here so our opponent can take away our flying bonus if they have some instant speed removal. So probably want to play Katilda and then we can still play Teachings as well. Another Hallowed Haunting could also be worthwhile. Find Restoration and Iganjo. Alright, um, do we still want to go for Katilda or do we get another Hallowed Haunting going here? And then I can maybe discard Katilda to hand size and disturb it next turn? Sure. And another restoration. Okay. Well, that was a pretty good turn for Ride of Harmony, and we're not done yet. No more planes to search up. Means only action left, 16 cards remaining. And let's see here. Do we have lethal, 10, 14, or one short? Do we go after Wandering Emperor? Yeah, I guess we'll send two creatures at Wandering Emperor to finish it off. Although I'm sure they have some interaction. Eh, they let it happen. Until next time, then. Wedding announcement triggers to draw. And another Wandering Emperor end of turn. We did gain a bit of life here, so we're still at 16. Shouldn't be in any danger of dying. Remember your training. And even a Meat Hook Massacre does not necessarily deal with our spirits. So let's discard to hand size, and I think I'm happy discarding Katilda here. There we go. So next turn we can Disturb for just 3 mana, thanks to the Naturalist discount. Emperor Plussing, and we're going to see an all-out attack. So yeah, if they were to Meat Hook Massacre, we have to be careful of not shrinking down our spirits and then losing them all to a board wipe. So if we can avoid it, we're not going to block with our spirits. And then we're going to be gaining a bit of life back from Naturalists. This can block here. This blocks here. This can draw a card. Yeah, this looks fine. Keeps all our spirits alive. So no Meat Hook Massacre can happen. And we even get an additional spirit, so it actually gets them up to 8. But yeah, Massacre for 5 would kill the two 1-1s, one 
but then these would still be a 6-6 at least. But we could see something like Farewell to wipe the board. But nope, our opponent concedes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Turn two, many journeys. Maybe turn three, hollow taunting already. And that's looking quite likely now. Opponent on Grixis colors. Make that four colors. Their own many journeys. Okay. So not sure what to expect. Might be a five color Kami War deck. For now they pass. And triple Hallow Taunting means I'm fine if one gets dealt with here. Going and just cycling a Proving Ground. And then I'll put a stop in my uh, draw step in case we draw a Rite of Harmony, I can cast it before many journeys transforms. So we can double spell teachings plus wedding announcements, or we can play another haunting first, and then next turn gets maximum value. Yeah, let's get maximum value. Opponents did play Soul of Wind Grace, so they are ramping nicely. Could see a Titan of Industry take care of a hello taunting but nope just their own teachings lots of land in the graveyard not really interested in blocking their 3-3 as it would mean untapping three lands so question is whether to chump or just take eight i think we'll take eight since our spirit's gonna grow pretty quickly here especially with a naturalist Now we could still play another Hallow Taunting. Yeah, you know, while we're here, maybe that's fine. Or we could go Announcement plus Teachings and already make our team enormous. Yeah, that's probably good enough. And attack. And now a Titan of Industry does not look too scary. But they could have all sorts of sweepers. Soul of Wind Grace is 6-5. And yeah, there's Titan of Industry. Blowing up Palette Haunting now doesn't seem as impressive. But might still be the play. And our opponent concedes. Yeah, they know they're just too far behind after that explosive turn. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a promising hand. Turn to teachings and then we can time our right. Maybe on the final chapter here if it's about to transform. And then we can maybe also draw an extra card of wedding announcement making a token. Or we could go with restoration first. Lots of options. But we'll start here. Going on blue-green, maybe a ramp strategy. Their own teachings, okay. And then now the question is Wedding Announcement versus Restoration. There are some nice two-mana cards in the graveyard that we could get back next turn and then enable a Rite of Harmony. Yeah, you know what, let's... Uh, Restoration now. And then probably gonna cast our right next turn, which will draw two right away. Welcoming Vampire, also a nice card draw engine. So we can take our draw step first. 
And yeah, casting right seems okay here. To put Azusa's many journeys in play, which will let us play an extra land as well. So we can play a 3-drop in case we don't draw a 2-mana card to still play here. And then another Restoration versus Wedding Announcement. Wedding Announcement would draw 2 right away, so that seems better. No attacks, and after turn make a token, draw another card. Well, that was a pretty good Ride of Harmony, it drew us 4 cards if I'm not mistaken. And then got a Hello Taunting to follow up. And a farmland's actually useful too in helping us double spell. So we'll go with Hello Taunting plus Teachings. Make an extra Spirit. Already have a Spirit in play. And Architect can also make Spirit Tokens. So now three Spirits total. Don't think we're attacking. Wandering Emperor can make a token. And then at some point we can flash back our Rite of Harmony and potentially get a lot of value with our Haunting making more tokens. Welcoming Vampire also pretty nice with Emperor. So they're keeping up with the card advantage. Turning humans into mana creatures can potentially pump the team later. So they've got a nice band mid-range deck here. And a Root Coil Creeper. Okay, we can take our draw step first. Do I want to Rite of Harmony? Could maybe wait one more turn, and then next turn completely go off. When we'll have more mana available. Sure, although there is the potential risk of our opponent dealing with Hello Taunting, and then Rite not being quite as explosive. So I think I'll still go for it now. And then plus one counter, perhaps on the Architect. Although it already has a reasonable enough attack. Can maybe put it on the 2-2. I'll put it on Architect. Make it harder for them to double block. And then... Can go for another Wedding Announcement here, I think. That'll make a token and draw. Team flies now too, and we can send all other opponents, maybe a couple at Wandering Emperor. Let's say the two tokens here. That seems fine. And then we can also make an extra 1-1, one -one, which will also draw with the right. Now the drawback is Wedding Announcement's just going to draw instead of making a token and drawing because we attacked with so many creatures. But that's okay. Bonus at 5. And we've got a full grip. Discard some tap lands to hand size. So our opponent's going to need something pretty special here. But uh, yeah, they could have all sorts of sweepers. Storm of the Festival, it's gonna have to be pretty amazing. Our creatures no longer are flying, since we're only controlling six enchantments at the moment, but uh, we can address that pretty easily. All right, found a run and seven, and another teachings, but they're mostly tapped out. These are samurai, not human samurai, so they don't make mana with Katilda. So they seem pretty dead. Could cast another 
draw step right of harmony if we want. Welcoming Vampire limited to drawing one card per turn, whereas Riot can easily draw a few more. So that making the main difference here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand has potential. Turn 2 Naturalist setting up turn 3 Hollow Taunting potentially. And if they remove it, we still have some nice 3 mana plays. Now we just go with many journeys, or do we? We would need to draw land for it to be effective. So I think I still prefer Naturalist. And we'll see if Junt has an answer. They do, Terra Sunder, but that also would have answered our Hello Taunting, so can't be too upset about it. Now, probably go with Wedding Announcements. So our Many Journeys is going to be stranded in hand for a while, not doing much. And a Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Okay, we can play our Hello Taunting at least. And yeah, hopefully they won't have too many more answers to enchantments. One Terra Sunder gone. Do we double block the Shaman? I don't think we do. Soul of Windgrace is a good one. So yeah, next turn it could already play Titan of Industry for all we know. We're just gonna play Hollow Taunting and pass. Or we can fall of Lord Konda and then play Azusas as well. Yeah, that's probably better. That way we get to attack, draw a card. And stop their mana engine. Okay, so now we can block the Shaman more profitably. Although, yeah, Reflection still a problem if they get a Titan of Industry down. So hopefully they don't. Would have been a reason to hang on to Fall to exile a Titan instead of having them copy it with Reflection. It's gonna be a Blazing Sky instead, that's fine. And a Liliana of the Veil, vale. that's acceptable. So we dodged a bullet there. Discard Naturalist, keep our second Haunting. And then... We'll go with Haunting here over Restoration. Do we want to pressure Liliana? Give them a bunch of treasure? Yeah, it's probably fine. Could also send the human tokens. And then what happens? They just eat a human token and they probably let Liliana go. Seems fine. Alright, opponent's going for the trade instead. Liliana still dies. And our opponent can go digging with Blazing Sky. Hopefully no Titan. They found a Harvester, still pretty good with Reflection. But not quite as devastating. So they can kill one of my creatures right away. And then we want to string together more enchantments here. A Rite of Harmony would be great. So we'll put a stop in case we top deck one to potentially draw with our transformation right away. Catilda's not bad either. And then we get to play Restoration, trigger double haunting, get a planes, and then still play Catilda afterwards. So we get to have our cake and eat it too.
an extra spirit to pump the current ones. And attack. Okay, we've got an 11-11 Catilda. Might be able to carry us across the finish line. And yeah, opponent jumping with Harvester. So can they draw out of it here? Titan of Industry might still be good enough to save them. Does have reach to block Catilda. Can blow up Hello Taunting. Maybe gain some life. It's going to be a Meat Hook Massacre for 5 instead. Okay, Catilda miraculously survives at 1. We get to draw off Fragment. So maybe they miscounted since they did have an extra treasure to cast it for one more. And yeah, they maybe realized their mistake. We still have quite a few enchantments here. And then discard Blossoming Sands to get back Naturalists. And then we'll cast this, I think, just to trigger double haunting. Or do we save it? Now let's put the pedal to the metal here. Grow Catilda twice. And hit for 10. What's next? Gonna be a Terra Sunder on Catilda, exiling it. Not bad. And a Graveyard Trespasser. Alright, so our opponent's empty handed. And we still have a pretty formidable board. And the backup Catilda also helps, and our opponent packs it in. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand has potential. Naturalist into Haunting, and then right to Refuel. Even have our two channel lines here. Although, don't end up using them very often. So we'll see what we're up against. Hopefully Naturalist survives. That's sometimes why we prefer a turn to many journeys, so... Creature removal doesn't disrupt our turn 3 haunting plans. Put it on a blue deck, so... Naturalist more likely to survive. Although haunting also more likely to get countered. If Haunting resolves against the Counterspell deck, it's going to be very difficult for the opponent to recover, since even if they potentially uh, counter our spells, we still get a Spirit every time, as it's on cast. Opponent Esper Colors instead, so we could see a removal for Hallowed Haunting as well now. Or for Naturalist. Maybe a Destroy Evil, destroys an Enchantment. No, oh, Infernal Grasp instead. Alright, so this turn we don't have anything going on, sadly. Although we can hang on to our channel lands. So we'll see if they have a devastating turn 3 play, just a tap lands. And another land, so let's hope there's no answer for Hello Taunting. No destroy evil, it seems, no counterspell. So we're good to go. Don't know if our opponent's playing. With Invoke Despair, if there are three colors, seems a bit difficult on the mana, but you never know. Okay. Seems like it's time for Rite. And then Teachings afterwards. I guess technically the correct sequencing might have been cast Teachings, and then before it enters the battlefield, we can cast Rite. And before getting the Spirit Token... Since this one checks on entering the battlefield as opposed to when casting, opponent negates our enchantment, so they must have drawn that this turn. Still get to draw one at least, and pick up a wedding announcement. Alright, that negate was effective. We would have been able to draw two more cards otherwise. And then now we'll have to wait until we flash back right, once we have more mana available to cast something alongside it. Opponent's got their own announcement. Okay.
and Fall waiting for a better target. Could also Boseju you with their announcement, which I don't hate. But let's start by casting our own and uh, see what happens. That resolves. Can attack for two. Could see them remove the spirit. They might have wanted to remove the author and then block with a 1-1. One -one. But maybe our opponent planning to keep their token so they can draw with wedding announcement. Now we're just gonna Poseidon. Get rid of it. And then question is, do we play Iganjo? I think we do, since we might need a lot of mana if we want to combo off with a Rite of Harmony. Which we might already do next turn. With Announcement making a token to draw. And then Fall can maybe draw as well. But we can wait until our draw step to see what we pick up. Alright, there's Shieldred. Perfect target for Fall. Now I still need a land in order to ride plus fall. And here, probably take it. Although if I'm going to combo with a ride, better to make a token and draw as opposed to just a drawing. So maybe it's okay to trade the one ones. Sure. Okay, so we'll draw. Land is good. So now we will ride. And then we can fall to get rid of Shieldred. And still draw a bunch of cards in the process. Got a replacement right. Do take a bit of damage on the way out. Attack for two, end of turn, make a token, draw again. And we've got companion plus right ready to go again, so. Yeah, hopefully no second shield red. That would be bad. Rafina's fine. Underdog gets to attack and connive. Think I want to preserve my spirits since they're going to grow pretty quickly here. Can maybe afford to jump with a human, especially if Underdog gets a counter. Yeah, I'll be jumping here. Stay at 11. And then we can wait until our draw step before firing off another right. Land is fine. So, yeah. Kickstart with a right of harmony. Then companion. And then probably go for teachings, as it'll draw more than restoration right away. And then we can likely still play a two-mana enchantment afterwards. Milling more copies of right is nice. Alright, did not find a two-drop, sadly. But we get to hit for ten. And next turn we should have some nice tools available. Opponent falls to three. And end of turn draw again. Catilda can help gain life if needed. Although I don't think this game's gonna last for much longer. Unless there's a sweeper here. Opponent sends a team. Happy to block. We'll have to do some Meat Hook Massacre math here. They can massacre for five. Which is enough to wipe all my spirits, since the smaller one would die, taking the bigger ones with it. So no point in trying to preserve the 6-6 six -six here. So this is fine. So if there is a Meat Hook Massacre, I guess now that they could do it for 4 instead of 5 to keep Rafine alive. So maybe that was still a reason to just jump with a Spirited Companion there. Yeah, I guess that was worth it. Although I don't think we'll struggle to deal with Rafine too much. Okay, damage happens, and our opponent passes. So they seem to have disconnected here. 
So yeah, we got to see the power of a Ride of Harmony in these mid-range matchups, drawing us a ton of cards, and uh, the typical green-white enchantment decks tend to be a bit more aggressive with cards like Generous Visitor and the Kami. So in a world with a lot of cheap removal and mid-range decks, going a little bit bigger with the extra card draw from right seems worthwhile. So yeah, performed quite well for us today. And I'm sure this list can still be fine-tuned a little bit. I was experimenting with two copies of the Fall of Lord Konda, but you could play some copies of Destroy Evil in the main deck to deal with opposing copies of Wedding Announcement or Fable of the Mirror Breaker. You could also try Borrowed Time as a more general purpose removal spell, and you could also try Leyline Binding by adding some Trilands in the mana base to give it a discount with Domain. So there's still quite a few options available there in the Flex slot department. And then I'm not sure if four copies of Azusa's Many Journeys is necessary, but it did feel like our deck wants a lot of mana. Once it gets to combo with Ride of Harmony, mana tends to be the limiting factor in how many cards you can draw in one turn. So I'm kind of liking the early acceleration. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.